In this video, we're going to cover how to ensure that the system is safe when it's shut down and precautions to take when the system is, is restarted again. Now, what you can see here is a, a t schematic of a typical um, pool plant system with a um, image on the left hand side of what the automatic dosing system might look like in a typical system, in a typical pool plant system. So what happens is uh, a sample will be, take, will be taken from the circulation line here and it will be taken to the automatic dosing system so I'm just tracing here how the water might go through. So they did, this bit is a is a filter, so it goes through there, and then ends up going into this part of the system where there's a couple of uh, analyzers in there that um, basically read the level of chlorine and pH, um, and the water goes through. and usually gets injected, re-injected into the system on the suction side of the circulation pumps. And um, the information that's being received here um, at the analyzers is being sent to um, the automatic monitoring equipment, which is connected to the chemical pumps um, on the uh, the chlorine and the pH dosing tanks. So here's a, here's another view where you can see the whole thing. So you've got uh, infant, uh, you've got the uh, probes analyzing the pH and the the chlorine there, sending the information there, and and th that's basically connected to the chemical chemical pumps tells them when to pump and and when not to pump um, when the system is shut down when the circulation is um, is turned off at the circulation pumps uh, sometimes that's done deliberately so when when you do a backwash you have to turn the circulation pumps off um, when you want to do a backwash so here are the circulation pumps they'd need to be turned off when you do a backwash um, what will happen uh, usually is that the flow of water being taken from the sample line and and sent to the um, to the analyzer you know that that will stop as well because there's no there's no pressure there's no pressure sending water around to the to the automatic dosing equipment um, because what happens is there's the, the there would end up being no flow going through and what you've got here is a little flow sensor because that when there's flow going through the system that little sort of bobbin is suspended um, within the uh, cell that you can see there because that the, there's water going through but what will happen is when the when the flow stops that will end up sitting back down it will descend and sit back down um, and that will tell the equipment here that there's no flow going through the system and that's all well and good um, but it's not fail safe and that's a big problem um, what I mean by that is is that if this fails to operate for some reason um, and all it takes really is an accumulation of uh, scale build up for example or, or, or some uh, uh, dirt gets in there and, and, and wedges sort of causes that flow sensor to not operate um, effectively um, and what's going to happen then potentially is you could have the chlorine 
um, and the pH correction, the acid, continuing to dose. Um, so the chlorine is being injected there. The acid is being injected there. And um, what I can actually do is show you what those injection points might look like. So here you can see a this is a, a an acid injection um, point on the system. And um, let me just blow that up for you. So here's the acid injection and the chlorine injection uh, looks something like that. Chlorine injection there, uh, acid injection. But take a look at where that's happening on this schematic. Uh, the injection points are fairly close together uh, and what you've got to realize is that these chemicals if you mix them together um, you get a reaction that takes place that results in the release of toxic chlorine gas you never want these chemicals to mix together and so what could potentially happen here is if you've got chlorine continuing to be being dosed in on this point of the system and the acid continuing to be being dosed in in this point of the system because this thing here is still operating because it's not been told by the flow sensor um, that there's no flow going through the pipe work then what you could potentially get is that chlorine acid mixture being created in the pipework here. It's going to mix together eventually uh, because those two injection points are fairly close. And what's going to happen potentially when when flow circulation is re-established, when the when the um, you know the circulation pumps are switched back on, is people in the pool hall and in the pool itself are going to be exposed to this toxic gas, this toxic chlorine gas. So what you must do, or what it's absolutely essential that when the um, when anything interrupts the circulation, and it could be, as I said, an intentional thing when you're doing the backwash, or it could be a power surge that results in the circulation pumps tripping out, you need to ensure that the power supply is isolated um, to the automatic chemical dosing equipment. So for example, what you'd want to do is turn it off there. So that means that if there's any problem with the flow sensor or if there's um, so the, if there's any reason that this control panel thinks that there is um, it's still okay to, to dose uh, chemicals in. It can't do it because you've made it fail safe by isolating the power supply there. You've turned it off. You, you've now actually made it fail safe. So that step needs to be included in um, procedures such as backwashing. So when you're backwashing, you shouldn't rely on the fact that in most automatic dosing systems, there is an interlock between the automatic dosing system and the uh, circulation pumps. But it only works if um, the, you know, the flow sensor works. If it fails, it doesn't fail safe. It fails to danger. Um, so when, when you're backwashing, or the backwash procedure needs to have a step that includes isolating the power supply to chemical dosing before you turn the circulation pumps off um, in order to carry out the backwash. Or if there has been a power surge and the circulation pumps have been knocked off, it's absolutely essential that somebody checks that the chemical dosing system is not continuing to dose chemicals um, into the into the circulation system because it will just be 
it will just be dosing into uh, you know, stagnant water. So the chlorine is being dosed there. It's going to sort of make its way. It's, it's going to kind of flood this area of pipework with chlorine. And similarly, the acid is just going to flood this area of pipework with acid. You're going to get this toxic chlorine gas here. And you could end up gassing people when you when because the it won't be obvious that that's happened because it's all contained in the pipework. Um, you, you know the pipework. You you won't you won't be able to actually see that it's happened until you turn the circulation back on and um, people start coughing and spluttering in the plant room. So that's the that's that's a very important step is to. As soon as you're going into the plant room and you know you're going to be turning the circulation off, first thing you need to do is turn the power supply off to the chemical dosing system and don't turn it back on again until you're ready to leave the plant room after you've finished the backwash. So bookend the procedure, bookend the activity that you're doing in the, in the plant room because it makes it easier to remember to do it. Uh, it becomes habitual. So first thing you do is, is chemical dosing off. Do what you need to do in the plant room. Do your backwash, but don't turn the uh, chemical dosing back on until you've finished and you've re-established circulation and you're okay then to turn the chemical dosing back on. Um, and also if, if, if there's a power surge that causes the circulation pumps to trip out, Make sure that you aren't in that situation where you've got chemical uh, chlorine being dosed in and acid continuing to be being dosed in as well. Very important to, to ensure that that doesn't happen.